Spot on cue. Uh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. I do think that will be a strategy today for her. And it worked out in this case. Yeah, you mentioned the ground stroke speeds. We actually had a, a quick chat with the team here at Hawkeye earlier on today. And there is an enormous golf. I mean, as you would expect, really, in terms of pace that both players produce. forehand speed for this lady was 80 seconds. miles an hour. Savile just 66. Backhand speed 72 miles an hour. Savile 60. So in terms of being out muscled, Sviontek definitely holds the upper hand. Saville with those higher balls, she cannot drop them too short in the court. If she gets the depth on it, I do think it will be a great weapon, pushing Iga Svantec back behind the baseline, creating more time for yourself on your part of the court. But if she is too short on those higher balls, Svantec will be all over them. serve in this open game. We're going to make a one. Really open up there. She's deep. Australia. You can see the feistiness right away. She came here to play. She came to win. How much of a presence is she on court? Andrea, you play that. How much do you feel her kind of intensity as an opponent? Well, she herself described her, herself as a, a small dog, you know? <laughs> they are relentless. When they bite, they don't let go. They think they are a bigger dog, and I would agree with her 100%. You constantly feel her presence, her intensity. She knows she doesn't hit the ball as hard, but she's so much talent, and she's so quick. You can see the scars on her knees, on both knees, ACL on both knees, and it's just a tremendous effort to be out here playing so well, so quickly after having one of the worst injuries in sports you can have. This lady knows a thing or two about rehab, that's for sure. Oh. 
I'm sure you've been in that boat, Andrea, rehabbing from injury. 15 months. How monotonous, how tedious, how difficult is it? Or, or if you're a professional athlete, is it just part and parcel of the job? just jumping the first serve in she knows that Shiontek is one of the not one of the she's the left. best returner on the WTA tour when it comes to second serves and here we have our colleague yep. Nick. Nicole Black Jay Gooding Nicole's been part and parcel of Dash's team for a long time isn't she Does it wears on you mentally because on one hand it's always the same movements very slowly executed you can't do anything dynamic tennis players hate not having a ball around and then on the other hand you see your colleagues and your rivals improving day in day out and you're just stuck in this one position it really wears you out mentally And of course, during COVID, she was really suffering with the injuries. Lockdown was so severe in Melbourne, wasn't it, where she was? She's had a lot thrown at her in her young life. I know it can be a bit vulnerable when somebody can get into it flatly hard with a lot of depth because she has kind of an extreme grip and I do think that's one of the reasons she hasn't quite figured out her way on grass yet but when she has a bit of time and when the ball sits up it's one of the most fearsome ground strokes on the WTA tour. Just failing it. One game off. Couple of doubles. Percent. Just there's that element of sort of a little bit of fear factor, isn't there, off the second as well? Yes, 100%. I do think that she took on both of these serves that she missed, took a bit more of a risk than she would normally do. Normally, she really just drops it in, tries to make it. But this time, she went for it and two double faults. If you look at the return games won this season, Triontek is above 50% now. Mm. It's incredible. That's an incredible stat, yeah. And I agree with you, Nick still hasn't found her rhythm on the first serve yet, Iga Shiontek. She has a nice kicker on the second, but she has those moments in matches where she just can't seem to find her first serve for a few games in a row. And that hurts her against the best in the world.
see it, doesn't she? Yeah, and that's it showed you why the first serve is so important for her. Once Iga is inside the baseline, there is virtually no coming out of that rally anymore. She just doesn't go off the accelerator, and it's just worse and worse as the oppo opposing party on the other side. She grew up, of course, in Moscow. Something that I wasn't aware of until this morning. Andre Rublev's mother was actually her very first coach in her formative years, which was fascinating to learn. Spartak Club. A lot of players have come out of there. Dementieva, that sort of generation of players from that part of the world. is her best shot on the court when she has a neutral ball through the center of the court and she can go around and hit her forehand. This one right there. And then she has the whole court open. She can play inside out. She can play inside in. And you just can't get out of it anymore. talk about 80 miles an hour whatever numbers we're going to talk about but when you factor in where she's actually striking the ball from it becomes even more potent exactly she she just takes time away from you twice by the velocity of her stroke and by her court positioning you get to the chance to see her life just pay attention to how she tries to take the balls on the rise at every moment that presents itself to her it's really really fascinating to watch and really a beauty oh. advantage Sala. She reached the top 20 in the world. It's the sort of player we're talking about here. It's combined singles and doubles as well, hasn't she?
through the tsopen.org if you haven't already. Get all up to date with the live scores, all the interviews on there. Plenty to see. Andre, you hit with Iga, that forehand, what it does in terms of the, the uh, what does it do to you as an opponent, sort of, in terms of the bounce? Well, actually, her and Sabalenka have a very similar forehand in that regard. When they hit that cross court, not only is it fast, but it also seems to push you back. When you have the ball in your strings, it seems to never stop moving in your strings. So players say, oh, he plays so heavy or she plays so heavy. That is the sensation. When you say about somebody they play so heavy, that's the sensation of hitting a ball, timing it well. But despite you timing it well, it still moves in your racket that much that you always have the feeling you have to be behind the ball with your full body weight. Otherwise, it will jump on you and you will not be able to control it. The one thing Iga sometimes does, and you can see it on her, um, on her hair actually, she takes the chin down too quickly on her serve, and you can try it at home if you take your chin down, your whole core collapses. It's really hard to keep the tension up if you take your chin down. serve compared to where it was when she first won Roland Garros. It's definitely evolved, isn't it? More fluidity in terms of the swing, it would seem. Trying to work on it. Maintains her lead here. Very nicely done here enough. by Savil, that is her absolute weapon. That forehand from the center of the court. We call Pret nods in approval. to the extra duty. <laughs> Which in theory, I would have thought, correct me if I'm wrong, it would favor the slightly bigger hitters, would it or not? I would say so, yes. And I do think yesterday, 
in the Georgie Pagula match or the Stevens Hanat Maya match, you could see that the women are feeling the ball really well. They just seem to be more comfortable with these slightly heavier balls. If you remember last year, a lot of the women complaining about not really feeling the ball, the ball flying on them, not being able to control it. And that happens with, it's very hot, it can be very hot conditions in New York, so it already plays slightly faster, and then with a lighter ball, you just sometimes have trouble controlling it in high temperatures. Another thing, Iga Shiontek does so well. You can never relax. She never lets you have a point just for the sakes of it. She's always there. So even if you're up 40, love, you have to have to be ready. Have to play each point. Such high intensity. And you can see the Australian just come out of the comfort zone a little bit, isn't it? Advantage. Yeah, kind of force it. Not to be... Didn't miss by much. Thanks, the lead. The man who never smiles. Yeah. Have you seen him smile ever, Nick? I don't think I have, no. Maybe she needs to win 10 slams yeah. before we see him smile. Yeah. What does it take? So they've been a good team, haven't they, over the last couple of years? That's for sure. What did you find coaching wise, Andrea, when you were looking for a coach? Obviously, you had a because I read so much about, obviously, a, a coach needing to know the individual mm -hmm. first and foremost. You need to know their personality. What did you find sort of coaches could get the best out of you, and how did that work in your career?
Well, a little bit of uh, thank you very much, <laughs> as we like to say. <laughs> I like that. 15 well, I do think everyone talks a lot about psychological aspects, and those are very important. And in the case of Thomas Witkarowski, who took Iga over, who was already a Grand Slam champion, you can see the thank you very much right here. Um, he really built her into a champion in, in, in the sense of being a number one player, being the leader of the WTA Tour, and being a dominant force. So that is a tremendous job by Thomas Witkarowski here. But I do think people underestimate the work 30. on the court. That's where the coach has the most most impact. And those are the times we don't see the players most often, but the players spend the most time on is the practice court. And depending on how he or she um, does the practice, what kind of intensity levels they bring into practice, the things they work on, I do think that affects the game more than the psychological aspects. So, a little opportunity here. Get some good work, just hustling a couple of extra balls back into play. Chance to get his second break. Australian has got a reward here. Playing, I think, her first match of the year, wasn't it? Got a win. It was an unusual game from Iga Shiontek, the game before. A few wild errors, but also speaks to the consistency and the foot speed. This woman right here, Saville, who covers the court so finely. <laughs> so we're trying to use that a bit, isn't she? Slice back out. Yeah, I think this one was the the shot was the wrong one to use. It was very fast, very deep. Hard to play a slice off that. Was that the reply <laughs> to the coaching, the tongue out? transitional part of their oh, game. Really nice. For about 40 minutes they were just that sort of play. Oh. Oh, that's, that's frustrating. 
not make the right play work. It's a game and a half for doubles now. I understand her, it's just the pressure when she does only put the serve in the box, then she's right away on the fire and even such a great defensive player as Saville doesn't want to have that feeling to be constantly on the fire and being on the back foot after the serve right away. And I love what you just mentioned. I do think that could be an even, as she's already nearly perfect with her game, Iga. Obviously, she's been the number one player for two years, but I do think that could be an even bigger add-on to her game if she could hit a few more drive volleys, take a few more up at the net, shorten the, the rallies. That could unleash another level of Iga Svantec, and I'm not sure the rest of the field is ready for that. over and then it wasn't <laughs> and you can see what happens when she does transition to the net just even more pressure on the opponent and Saville, who does not hit many unforced errors, has already hit a few when she sees Iga Svantec closing the room on the other side from the periphery of her eye. of the set. He's given her two chances. hard to do against those top players do you play your own game and see where it leads you or do you try to do a bit more and I think we saw in the first set Saville 
struggling with that or trying to figure out answers to that question. Do I go for more? Do I play my speed? Savile is known for her when she gets stretched on the backhand to play that floater slice, but she saw Chionte coming in out of the corner of her eye, so she knew I have to give that a little bit, and that's when the unforced errors happen. two floating slices, and you see what happens when you don't take them out of the air. Savile so quick around the court that she found her way back into this rally. Yeah. Nicole Platt on the left has been a little constant in this lady's team since she was a youngster. That she only started playing for Australia as an 18 year old. That's when she first got her passport, Aussie passport. Yes. Just actually looking at the second serve points, one oh from 12. Now, of course, there's six doubles in there, but speaks to the problem she's having. How much more improvement do you think there is in Ego in terms of how much more there is to come from her game? We touched obviously on her transitional side, Andrea, but how much better a player do you think she can become? I think she's very, very close to her top level. I do think the tra transitional side, I think if she can, she almost never takes drive volleys out of the air. I do think she can shorten points even more if she took those floaters out of the air. Her first serve, that's the one thing where I sometimes see her run into problems against the very top of players. And she's so good from the baseline that she can still get away with it and still win those matches. But I do think it would make life easier for her and it would help her win Wimbledon because I do think I know how these top players think and I think it's bothering her that she hasn't won that one. And the Australian Open that also plays a bit faster. So you can see those fast courts when a first, big first serve helps you. That's the two grand slams she still has in front of her and I'm sure she has her eyes set on them fiercely.
straight served. Savile just not going to quite get the length. And, and again, we talk about it. Wasn't even struck that hard before, him, was it? But it's the fact that there's so little time to recover. when you face those top players when they go up ahead a break and a set they just their arm just flows even looser they're even more confident than they already came into the match and it's harder and harder to gain ground on them you have to force more and more and your unforced errors creep up their unforced errors creep down it's very frustrating playing them <laughs> especially at the grand slam stages She is 48 and 0 this year from a setup. Last year from a setup, she was 56 and 2. So yes. better not let her get too far ahead. The evidence of those numbers. It's not that easy to see, but you can see the ball going through the court a bit faster. You can just see that she has that she has been hitting even harder in the second set than she has been in the first set. And that's what I want to see even more of those drive volleys. I do think that's something she can do even more. Gashviantek. still frustrates her. Perfectionist sort of mentality.
She doesn't hit as many winners with it, but it's so important for her game because she gets the rallies over that side where she wants the ball to be. She makes the opponent run into the their forehand side. They tend to loop it a bit, and then she has that that ball sitting up for her forehand to go for. When she came up on tour, she almost played exclusively back in cross court, so that's something. Fred's also blowing her sweat away from her hands. determines your altitude. And she encapsulates that beautifully, doesn't she? Yeah, I, I loved how she tries to ramp up the energy. She knows she has one more shot at this, trying to get the audience on her side, trying to get her own intensity up. And here we have Storm Hunter, very good lefty player, and Savile's box. Australians supporting each other, very nice to see. with a, a win on this court earlier on today. She's playing with Elise Merton still, is that the case? They did make the finals in Wimbledon together. Yeah. Yeah, playing here, second seed. <laughs> Merton's actually plays Collins, first-run doubles as well. 
Save the match point on this exact court here earlier today. Mertens did. Still remarkable yet to win a point behind the second serve. Oh, from 13, that's incredible. The serve really standing in the way of Saville today. Yes, Iga Shiontek is dominating the rallies, but Saville has a lot of weapons in her repertoire to bother Iga. Very crafty, a lot of change of rhythm in her game, but that serve, that second serve specifically, is hurting her over and over and over again and preventing her from making this match even closer than it already feels at times. Serve? I mean, I think when you look at it, you know, when you go back, Andre, and you look back to the three years ago, it's a lot more fluid now, isn't it? The racket arm doesn't stop moving quite as much as it, it does, but I think the ball toss sometimes, from my just watching her, observing her, seems to go a little bit, doesn't it? You? I agree with you that she has, that she has improved it tremendously over the last three years. I do think maybe she could get more rotation on the first serve with her upper body. I think she could get a few more miles per hour. But I, I see them working on it all the time, so I'm just wondering on what they are working and where it will go from here. It's amazing, actually, how much of the pace of the shot is generated by the, the truck 
isn't it? The movement of the trunk. I always think of Milos Raonic when I think of that. Like, so much upper body turn, didn't it? So kind of, it didn't look like he was actually hitting the serve that quickly, but he had so much rotation of his upper body. to a great podcast the other day with Mark Kovacs. I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've heard of Mark. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Biomechanics, it's pretty deep stuff with Mark. Oh. And he's of the opinion that maybe in 10 years' time, the ladies will all be serving 120. He thinks that the technical improvements in women's tennis will come substantially on the serve. He thinks that there's there's a lot more room for improvement in certainly the ladies, the majority of serves in the ladies game. You ever play? I, I would agree because if you see now who is dominating the the WTA tour, it really it, they really are big servers. Iga Shiontek may be a bit of an exception, but she serves well too. It's not like she has a bad serve. She just doesn't hit it as big as a Rybakina or a Sabalenka. So I really agree. And even on the men's side, uh, Yannick Sinner, for example, he, they have experimented with his serve this whole year. And now he seems to f have found the motion that suits him well. And all of a sudden he wins his first Masters title. Yesterday he played a tremendous match. So you can see how much the serve does affect your game. It just, it's like a virus. It, it infuses your whole game. When you serve well, you play better. And when you don't serve well, it just is in your game as well. side of it. Some shot though, wasn't it? This one going down cross court there, you can hit it a bit more aggressively, more court to work with. Did a good job of that.
Self, does she? Sandy. It's pulls back into play. Make sure our opponent will work. in the four and cross, which is in play. she has lost to at her record it's mostly players have a really good back and down the line themselves and who are able to change that direction before Iga does herself the Pagulas the Rebakinas even Danielle Collins who seems to bother her when she's in, a, in good form Danielle some plates, just to create a bit of an angle. Too many matches this year where Shrontek's been a sizable favourite and has still been kept on court over an hour and a half. Credit to what Savile's been able to produce out here. today because from the rallies I do think she's doing some good things in bothering Iga trying to mess with her rhythm just the surf really has hurt her tremendously today Dasha Saville still hasn't won a point after serving a second serve it certainly feels like baseline points one would be fairly even. We yeah. don't have that statistic, but I think it would be relatively cut tight. Yeah. 
Obviously changed it up, didn't she? For the wide serve. with it was able to change to the back end down the line before Iga just rushed moved her upper body back before hitting the ball and lost momentum on the ground stroke Oh. 
to second that first that one. The world number one today. Shriantek who plays them fairly well. If you don't move your feet and put yourself in the right position, they will jump out of your strike zone. And if you just show a bit of hesitancy on those balls, the margin of error grows with every percentage of hesitancy. And a little opening here for Saville. worried because it really went up high but she managed to use her foot speed and be in position exactly at the right time this without the surgeries, <laughs> let alone with the surgeries. Just incredible court coverage and nice job from Iga to stay calm and wait for the right opportunity to pull the trigger in the end. She's had a good test today. She may well get to... Thank you. 